Before I came to Thermo, I spent some time in the, in the Navy as a biochemist and um, came away with a lot of knowledge. And one of the things I learned in that capacity was you can tend to tell who's the lowest ranked by where they're placed within a presentation. So I feel now that I'm with Thermo and um, I manage a sample preparation product, it's probably only fitting that um, Ivy last here. So as you guys are all anticipating, Miller time. No, all kidding aside, I wanted to thank Heinz for uh, letting me come today and speak about the accelerated solvent extractor. Um, we had a very impressive program so far. There's a lot of outstanding presentations, and I was impressed to see sample preparation covered earlier. So I just wanted to circle back and end today with talking about an automated sample preparation technique and how it can be used for a laboratory performing a POP analysis. So before I begin, I just wanted to get a show of hands. Who currently is performing sample preparation in their laboratory? Okay, good. So I'm in the right place here. I got kind of confused when I was, got off the train and the cab was driving me over. It's like, hope <laughs> I'm going to the right hotel here. So, so everyone who raised their hand, how many are performing an automated sample preparation, such as like automated soxalate or the PLE that you saw from FMS this morning? Okay. Well, good. Good. Hopefully this presentation will be relevant then. So what I like to do is draw an analogy to help people, you know, understand sample prep and put it in perspective. And I like cars. So we've seen a lot today about analytical techniques. There's a lot of outstanding technology on the market for GCMS systems and LCMS systems. And I liken that to a Porsche 911. I mean, I think we can all relate to this car here. It's an exceptional sports car. It performs very well, very beautiful. I mean, it's very functional. So a lot of laboratories are going to have a car like this parked on their bench for their analytical techniques. What surprises me when I visit customers is oftentimes I see something like this parked next to it for the sample preparation. Um, an old VW wagon. And it still, it still runs. It was built well in its day. It still can get you from point A to point B. But yet sample prep hasn't seemed to catch up at the same rate that the analytical techniques have. So translation, what does it oftentimes look like? For solid samples anyway. A soxalate apparatus. This is a technique that was invented in 1879 and it's still being used by a lot of laboratories today. It works. It will extract your analytes from the matrix. However, it's very slow. It oftentimes can take hours per sample, and it can use hundreds of milliliters to get the analytes out. So with this in mind, is there anything that can be done that can move this technology forward and make it a little more comparable to that Porsche 911? So, you know, the parking lot that is our bench looks a little bit nicer. And one answer to that is accelerated solvent extraction. This is a technique that was introduced to the market in 1997 and second generation was launched in 2008. This system uses elevated temperature and pressure to accelerate that extraction process. And it's been shown consistently to generate results that are equivalent to or exceed what we can get from soxalate-based extractions. Recently, it was accepted for use in US EPA method 3545A. And shown in the picture there is our latest model, that's the ACE 350. That's a carousel-based system that can process up to 24 samples of varying sizes. So a little bit more about ACE. The cells are cylindrical and they have a flow-through design. And what that enables you to do is inline filtration and in-cell cleanup. Inline filtration comes in the form of a cellulose filter that can filter out particulates from going into your collection vessel. And in cell cleanup is typically the addition of an absorbent, such as alumina. Um, alumina can absorb lipids that are often found in tissue, and compound lipids often can interfere with the GCMS analysis um, as part of your workflow. Also, it has precise control of temperature and pressure for each individual sample. Again, it uses much less solvent, typically 50 milliliters or less per sample, and the time is much shorter for extraction per sample, typically 15 minutes. It does support cell sizes from 1 to 100 grams, and again, it can do up to 24 samples in one batch. So how does ACE work? Just briefly, again, it is a carousel-based system. The sample is loaded into the stainless steel cell where it's placed into an oven that's filled with solvent, heated, and pressurized. This is referred to as a dynamic extraction. And once that's complete, it enters into a static phase where solvent is not added. It will sit in the static phase with the solvent and heat and pressure, forming a favorable equilibrium between your analytes and your solvent. Once that's complete, it can either be rinsed and purged to completion, or numerous static cycles can be completed to fully ensure the extraction is exhaustive. 
on average, each extraction takes tw 12 to 20 minutes per sample versus what would normally be hours with a soxalate technique. A little more about the cell. Um, color is a little off, but that's kind of the schematic of what the stainless steel cell looks like. Again, it can be add, you can add um, an absorbent, such as alumina, to that that will retain compounds like lipids that can interfere with your analysis. So oftentimes, the use of this can eliminate the need for a GPC cleanup, since the cleanup step can occur right within the cell during the extraction. So, with that in mind, how can this be used for laboratory performing POP analysis? Um, since I'm a little limited on time, I just wanted to focus on one of our newest applications, which is a simultaneous extraction of PAHs and PCBs from muscle tissue. Typically, these two classes of compounds rely on two separate extraction methods with two different solvents. We wanted to experiment with the ACE to see if that could be combined into one with a single set of conditions to streamline the workflow in the laboratory. So uh, folks in our Salt Lake City office purchased some, some muscles from a local grocery store, and these were spiked with PAHs and PCBs to determine the percent recovery and percent RSD. And analytical determinations were made using a GCMS and a GCECD. So two different methods were investigated here using the ACE. Um, the primary difference between them is the oven temperature. Obviously, the higher the temperature, the greater the extraction efficiency. Static time, again, that's the amount of time that that cell is in the oven being held at the elevated temperature and pressure. And static cycles, the number of times you're cycling between that dynamic phase where you're adding solvent and that static phase. So we looked at two different set of conditions to see if we can optimize this method and come up with a combined method to save time in the laboratory. So again, commercially purchased muscle tissue was spiked with PAH, base neutral, PCB, and aerochlor 1254 surrogates. PH and base neutral were at 5 micrograms per gram, PCBs 30 nanograms per gram, and the aerochlor was 2 milligrams per gram. And both sets of samples, they were run in sets of six. Both sets were mixed with a diatomaceous earth dispersant, which acts to dry the sample and facilitate solvent flow through, homogenized and placed into a 66 milliliter extraction cell. Additionally, 20 grams of acidic alumina was added to the cell to retain any lipids that may extract with our analytes of interest. So GC conditions here, I mean, you can pretty much read what's on here. I know they used a 5% diphenyl capillary column for the analysis. And here's results from extraction method number one. So you can see all of our PAH compounds and our PCB compounds are within acceptable EPA recovery limits. Percent ranges from 83 to 107%. So using that first set of conditions, we can show here that this method, it can be combined into one for both classes of compounds. However, it looked like the elevated temperature may have brought out some additional compounds as well beyond the ones we were looking for. Um, you can see there's a lot of interference in the chromatogram here due to co-extractable compounds. So taking a look at the second method, again, the PAHs and the PCBs, the recovery ranges are within acceptable EPA limits, 83 to 114% in this case, and the chromatogram looks much better. So in using two different methods with the alumina for in-cell cleanup, we were able to eliminate lipid interference without the use of a GPC cleanup and come away with a nice, clearly resolved chromatogram. So just in wrapping this up today, um, accelerated solvent extraction increases the efficiency for pH and PCB extraction from an environmentally relevant matrix. Both classes can be extracted using a single method in under 45 minutes. And the ACE is optimized to remove co-extracting compounds, such as lipids in this case, and can eliminate the need for a GPC cleanup step. So with that, I will wrap it up.